Live Sports. This is the locker room. Good evening, everyone. Welcome inside the final hoops locker room of the season. He's Peter. I'm Justin. Pete, it all comes down, really, to these next few weeks. It does. The 110th annual boys basketball tournament tipped off earlier this week. And, Prince, as you know, plain and simple this time of year, you win, you advance, you lose, and as the kids say, it's curtains for you. Season's over. Tonight, sectional semifinals going down all across the area. Yeah, and we begin our night in Class 4, a sectional 5 semifinal at Carroll. Host Chargers taking on Northrop. Both teams trading bows from the long line early in this one. First, it's Cody Berkey from the corner. Other end of the floor, Quaylen Pettis. You're going to see him with three of his game high 17, but I love the headband too. I do too. But once I love again, those, those style headbands. They're pretty cool. Once again, Berkey has the answer. Same exact spot, same exact result. He led the Chargers with 12. Chargers down one after a quarter, but Nick Haynes got hot in the second. It was curtains from there. First, he pulls from distance in the corner, and then you're going to see him hit another from downtown. Whoa. He had four. That, that is a look. He had 14 to help the cause. Bruins led by four and a half, but get this, Pete. Yeah. They held Carroll to single-digit quarters three times tonight. They go on to win by 14, 44-30, your final. Defense. Defense. All right, so the Bruins will get the winner of the nightcap between Snyder and East Noble. Panthers up four at the half, but came out on the prowl in the third. Not sure that this is how they uh, drew this one up, but it's a bucket for Isaac Farnsworth nonetheless. A few possessions later, that's good coaching from Coach Roush. In transition, good luck stopping Michael Ely. He led Snyder with 20. Panthers up 11. Knights need a timeout. It would help. First possession after Hayden Jones. Just committed. Backdoor cut for the bucket. Next trip down the floor. Jones again. Pump fake. Gets the bucket to go. Plus another game high 27 for him. But... They could have used a, a few more from Hayden. Knights just not able to slow down Snyder. Dylan Duff, two of his 19 points. Panthers win 67-52. They got a date with Northrop tomorrow. Staying in Class 4, we head down to Huntington. An all any 8 matchup in the early game. Craig Teagle and the host Vikings taking on Bruce Stevens and New Haven. And the Bulldogs had a bite to them early, specifically Donovan Lewis. Quick trigger on the three. First bucket of the game gives the dogs the lead. Moments later, look out, because Lewis is feeling himself already. Three more with a hand in his face. New Haven jumps out to an 8 nothing lead. He's Vikings. never shy, Donovan. No. The Vikings would find their footing after that, though. Later in the first quarter, Devin Newcomb loses his defender on the screen, knocks down the triple. Quiet night for Newcomb. He finishes with just six. Lewis, on the other hand, anything but quiet. This time, 12, running the break. Nice setup from Jamar Hutchins. Game high, 24 on the night for him. Bulldogs move on, 68-51, your final. So whom will New, he New Haven see in the title game tomorrow night? We know it'll be somebody from the SAC. Homestead taking on Southside. Spartans in firm control when we pick it up third quarter. Alec Grinsfelder 
He had 13 on the night. That bucket put Sparty up 11, but Archer's not going away. Good ball movement from the guys in green. Xavion Hollister gets the deuce moments later. Off the inbound, Cameron Mitchell. He's, he, not, shy. he's not shy either. Deficit trimmed to nine, but Goody wouldn't let the Archers get much closer. The junior was sensational tonight. Put him in the book for a game high 30 mm -hmm. as Homestead advances 84 to 63. They'll take on New Haven down in Huntington for a championship tomorrow night. The Doug Ogle retirement tour continued this evening. Warsaw taking on Penn. Tigers hoping to extend Ogle's career at least one more night. Kingsman jump out ahead early in this one. Carter Hickey spots up from the corner. That three helped Penn build an 11 point lead, but Warsaw makes a run towards the end of the first half. Brock Poe pulls up from just outside the free throw line, hits the jumper. Tigers back within single digits. A couple possessions later, Warsaw down two, they're feeling it. Jalen Kuhn knocks down the three. Warsaw takes the lead, and Ogle gets one more night as head coach of the Warsaw Tigers. They win 58-54. They're taking on Northridge tomorrow night for the sectional title. Final 4A stop comes in West Lafayette. Marion eyeing a trip to the sectional seven final, taking on Logansport. Both teams trading blows inside in this one. First, it's Josh Balfour with the bucket for the Giants. Other end, Garrett Barron answers with a deuce inside of his own nice pass, but Marion, they can get out and run with the best of them, and that's exactly what they did tonight off the miss. Balfour with the two-handed punch. You're going to see it right here. Nicely done, young fella. Giants win 63-47. They'll face Harrison tomorrow for the sectional title. To Norwell we go in Class 3A. The NE8 champs hosting sectional 23. They're taking on Belmont early in the first quarter. Norwell's big man, Will Geiger, draws two men on him. That gets Drew Federspiel open for the cut, and he gets the bucket to go. Belmont, they would fight hard, though. Cade Filling. No good from long range, but Caden Staub able to grab the rebound and stabs it back home. A few plays after that, Nick Ellsworth gets the man with the head fake. He goes up and under for the buckets. Nice, but the Knights, nice finish there. they're the NE8 champs for a reason. Geiger drilling a triple here for Norwell. They'd add three more. If he's hitting threes, good luck. Yeah, they'd add three more just a, a little bit later as Norwell. Cruises on to the sectional championship. They win 64-46 over Belmont. So the Knights get the winner of this night cap. Heritage taking on Mississinawa and Prince. Their nickname may be Ole Miss, but they weren't missing much tonight. Early on in the third, Trey Miles to Hayden Ulrich. Wide open under the bucket. He gets the bunny to go. Heritage would respond. Luke Saylor, no relation to Caleb. He would know. He wrote these highlights. <laughs> Caleb, that is. Jacob Parnin. Able to tickle the twine for three. A few plays later, it's going to be Parnin again. This time, the assist to Parker Tracy. Can't leave him open. Ole Miss does. Tracy makes him pay. Ole Miss, though, they were the far better team tonight. Bryce Oglesby, you're going to see him knock one down from the corner. Ole Miss moves on 70-50 to the final. They'll take on Norwell tomorrow night. We move up to Railroader Country, sectional 22 at Garrett. Concordia taking on Angola. Cadets up late in the third and adding to it. Arnon Samardzik, fader baseline. Say that name three times fast. Give him the hoop. Plus one, Concordia goes up 11. Next trip down the floor. Samardzik, the dish to Braden Pearson. Hoop and harm for three of his game high, 17 there. Concordia up 12 after three. Angola has a run in him, though. Banks open late for Dyer. Ball from deep. That cuts the lead down to six. Next possession. Ball again. Tough move down low. He led the Hornets with 16. Cuts it to a four-point game, but that's as close as they'd get. Cadets would seal it at the line late. Their winners, 47 to 40, your final. All right, the Cadets get the winner of the late game. Couple East Allen County schools going at it. Woodland taking on Leo. Lions started out hot in the first tonight, already up one. Blake Davison, his game is smooth. The DJ Allen pick and roll. Allen had a game high 15, Lions up three. Woodland able to hang around early. Mitch Mendenhall, strong take to the cup for two of his 10. That pulls the Warriors back within one. Then Joe Reedy, always getting buckets, giving the hoop and the harm. 
He had 14 on the night. That's a, a team high. Warriors take their first lead, but it wouldn't last long. Other end, Eric Steger, pure from distance. Eight of his nine coming in the first half. And they'd cruise from there. Davidson mentioned him earlier. I love watching this dude play. Leo runs away with it, 66-39. They'll see Concordia for the sectional title tomorrow night. Last time they played, Prince, Braden Pearson, buzzer beater. Yep. Over at the pit, sectional 21, the host Northwood Panthers taking on West Noble tonight. Late fourth quarter, Trent Edwards splits the defense, hits the layup. Panthers up big. Northwood, they would go back inside, and they were very successful at it tonight. Ian Rash gets the easy layup to go. Panthers, they're playing for a title tomorrow. Northwood wins big, 52 to 33. So they'll get the winner of Wawasee versus Lakeland. Warriors haven't played for a sectional championship since 2015, trying to get there tonight. It's the Lakers, though, firing from the outside to start. Bracey Shepard hits the three ball. Lakeland trailing at that point, and later, Wawasee able to extend their lead. Austin Miller, the catch and shoot. He's confident. Moments later, nice backdoor cut, and it's going to be Miller finishing through contact. Double figures on the night for him. Wawasee wins 56-45. Elsewhere in Sat Class 3A, sectional 24 at Newcastle. Jay County season comes to a close with a 70-44 loss to Hamilton Heights. Hamilton Heights will play Delta for a sectional title tomorrow. They top Yorktown 39-29. Bump down to Class 2A, Manchester, the host of sectional 36. First game of the night, Wabash taking on Canterbury. And when we pick this one up late third quarter, it's all Apaches. Derek Vogel puts Wabash up 15 with just over 11 minutes to play. But then Noah Drapala caught fire for Canterbury in the fourth, off the inbound. The pull-up mid-ranger, that cuts the deficit to five. Couple minutes later, it's a two-point game. Somehow, Drapala is wide open. He can't do that. And just like that, the Cavs have the lead. Drapala had 21 on the night, all of them in the second half. And then with under a minute to play, Wabash up one. Will Shank puts the Cavs in front for good. Shank had a game-high 32 as Canterbury comes all the way back and wins 69 to 66. And their prize, they await the winner of the nightcap between 2A number two Blackhawk Christian and South Adams. Starfire is a big underdog in this one, but they're hanging around early. James Arnold, quarterback on the football team, bucket getter on the basketball court, gives the Starfires a 7-6 lead in the first quarter, but that would uh, be their last lead of the night, Pete. The yep. other end, off the kick out, Callan Wood cans a three. Moments later, if you want to double team Caleb first, you know, that's that's fine. There's but, two guys there, and, and, and that means somebody's open. But the Braves have a lot of shooters. This time it's Zane Burke, open for a triple later. You're going to see more from Mr. Burke. He had a game high 22 on the evening. Blackhawk cruises past the Starfires, 83 to 46. Last stop in 2A, sectional 36, and we'll have an all NECC sectional final at Westview tomorrow. How about this? Churubusco got out to an 18 0 lead wow. on Westview. They hold on to win 58 to 50, and they'll play Central Noble, their rival, tomorrow night up <laughs> in Westview. Cougars topping Bremen in a tight one, 60 to 57. On to Class 1A, sectional 53 at Southern Wells tonight. Northfield taking on Lakeland Christian. The Norsemen applying pressure all night. LCA, though, no problems breaking it. Peter Kohler, the kind bounce off the rim. That's three points for the Cougars. Norsemen, they did struggle early in the third, but turn it on late. A big reason why Clayton Tomlinson is going to work the ball around. And, you know, if you work the ball around, you better get it back. Finishes at the rim. Again, more from Tomlinson goes the length of the floor, blows by his defender. Two more for the Norse, but LCA just too much for them to handle tonight. Cameron Shepard in the corner, drills the three. Lakeland Christian ends Northfield season 59-43. They're off to the sectional final. Their opponent determined just an hour after they booked their ticket, host Southern Wells taking on Southwood, and it was not pretty, let's just say, for the home team tonight. Southwood's Jackson Simons, the strip, Able to find Connor Rich streaking into the lane. Gives the Knights their first points of the game, first lead of the game. A few plays later, Carson Rich again intercepts the inbounds pass. He finds Jackson 
Opreisk. I, I probably didn't. Opresec. Opresec. Sure. Sure. Sorry if we got that wrong. He man. gets the layup to fall. Southern Wells able to get something going here. That was Dylan Junk inside. Goes up strong. Gets the two. But Southwood, like I said, they were just too much tonight. Simons into the lane. Gets the layup to go. I, again, apologize. I probably butchered that name <laughs> horribly. Southwood wins, though, 69 44. Last stop of the night comes in sectional 51 up at Fremont. Elkhart Christian ends Hamilton season with an 83-30 win. They'll face Lakewood Park tomorrow for the sectional title. The Panthers topping Fremont 66-41. And our final play of the night for the 2019-20 season goes to Canterbury's Will Shank. That fadeaway jumper with under a minute to play Shank in the fourth with the stank. With this, in the fourth quarter. Put the Cavs on top for good in their come-from-behind win over Wabash. They trailed again by as many as 17 in the second half, but Shanks' 32 points helped lead them into tomorrow night's sectional title game, where, as you said, Prince, their prize is second-ranked Blackhawk.